Hello, Joe here. I'm going to digress from my let's repair my termite backhoe to this little feature film. What I had stated in my last little bit in the backhoe repair series is that I had gotten to this point and in spite of all my careful planning and stuff after I welded in new bosses and pressed in the fittings, the bushings, my shaft no longer fits. So, because I want to make this freestanding, I have to give you some context. This backhoe piece had the bosses on it on both sides and bushings in them. And at some point, the person let it wear so bad that even the bosses wouldn't hold new bushings. And they had welded the bushings into the boss. So I cleaned everything out, got back to an inch and a half hole, both ends, and decided that I was going to rebuild this. So I turned two bosses on the lathe, and to get them centered, what I did was take a one inch piece of shaft, because at the time that was the best shaft I had for being straight and so forth, Turned some adapters to get up to inch and a inch and a half and stuck these adapters into the inch and a half hole on both ends, put the shaft through, then put the bosses on each end and welded them. And the reason I did it with all this is because I knew the heat would warp some of the bushings probably really badly. So I decided to weld it up with this adapter in. I got the adapter out and pressed the bushings in. They seem to go in nice and snug. And now my inch and a quarter shaft doesn't fit the bushings. It gets about halfway in each one. And I, st I still don't know if it's lined up. So I decided I'm going to try line boring these. I watched a lot of videos over the past few months and I really didn't want to spend the time, but to do this right, I guess that's what I'm going to do. And it may not even be right, because I'm actually going to line bore these nice new bushings. Um, I'd be a little more hesitant if the shaft was turning in the bushings, but it's not. The shaft gets bolted. It's got a plate on the top, gets bolted to this. So this is all stable, and the place it turns is on the shaft in the middle on these two blocks. So as long as I get it in straight and snug, I don't care if I've taken a little bit off those bushings. They're hardened bushings. I think they can handle it. So that's the deal. And I may only be taking off a few thousands. So this is my attempt at line boring. The first part is to get a shaft in the middle with pillow blocks and centered in the bushings. So I turn these two brass or bronze cones. I made cones so I could get it centered, lock them down. Don't care if I score my shaft a little, so I didn't worry about that. And cut a whole bunch of standoffs um, to thread. So I'm going to thread those in here on each side so it'll be about like this and then weld them. Just tack them on each place. Everybody seems to tack them in place and then knock them off with a hammer when they're done and grind the weld off. I don't know if I'm that good. We'll see. Um, almost all the line boring that was done, the initial bearings are on the outside. Well, I don't want to do that here. I'm, I'm hoping that because I'm not taking much, I can take my time uh, I don't want to have to try to get in here with the bolts. The bolts or the studs are going to be too close to this. And here I've got an extra piece that would really screw me up. So that's where I am. I'm, uh, I'm at the point now that I'm getting ready to put my, my standoffs in. And we'll see how it goes from there. I believe the next step of making my line boring 
setup is all complete. I have drilled and tapped these for the bolts. I've now welded them in place because these are pillow blocks. They're kind of like self-centering. So now the trick is, is what happens when I release the centering bushings? Do they... Does it work correctly? <laughs> that's the that's the interesting part. Oh, that one came off nice. And that one came off nice. And boy, you couldn't ask for more than that. It just that's just perfect. So the next step looks like I'm gonna have to clean that before I can slide it out. It's a little cruddy in there from the welding, but that's okay. I can get a piece of sandpaper in there or emery cloth. So the next step is to uh, figure out where I want to drill a hole to put a carbide bit in and a set screw hole next to it. I think that's the next step. And uh, well, we'll see what happens after that. We're back. So, what's happened in the meantime? Well, I went and drilled a quarter inch hole there and then used a file and spent a fair amount of time making it a pretty close to square hole. And then I put in a set screw to hold my cutting tool which is a carbide and I turned the end of this down initially I was going to take this whole thing and come over here and set up a plate across here and a plate across here to make a fixture to hold that monstrosity only it would have to be on its side or upside down. And then I could use the head of the lathe to, for speed, for the rotation. And I could feed it very carefully with my, with my bed. The setup was going to be with a couple of U-joints so that if I wasn't perfectly centered it wouldn't matter. But instead what I tried, because again I only need to take a couple of thousandths off, is I turn this down and it fits my my drill, my 20, my little no-name drill you might say. And now Instead of this getting hung up halfway through, it actually goes all the way through, right up to the bearing, nice and snug. And either way, didn't doesn't matter. This way apparently goes a lot nicer. So I only I took off shavings, just just minor. You can see very little stuff, but it was enough. So now we're gonna try it on the other side. And the biggest thing is to manage your feed because you're hand feeding it with a little electric drill and not to try to take too much at one time. So that's what I'm up to next. We'll try it. We'll see what happens. I had success on one side I hope I have success on the second side and then I have to see if in fact they lined up after I set them up with cones.
Okay, now for the fun part, I'm going to remove the pillow blocks and see if the shaft goes all the way through. It would appear I need to clean up that shaft a little bit. Okay, success, but not on the first try. I had turned these just a little bit and the shaft would go in and then it would get stuck. It was really too tight. So I reset the I reset this. Now I'm gonna have to take those dents out. I reset this a little bit more aggressive and was running it with my cordless drill and didn't have the oomph, didn't have the speed. So I went and got this, uh, put it on high speed, and boy, you could see the sparks inside after that. It was glowing. I actually caught the oil on fire from all the glowing chips from the, from the um, bushing. But uh, I'll tell you what, it, um, it might not fit now. I only made one looser, which is the top one, because the, the, the pin has to go in from this end. I left this one snug. First line boring job. This has got it's got some play, but boy, not much. I suppose I could try to figure out how much that is, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it. That's 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 a bazillion times better than it was. So this will go. This is this this is racked up as a success. I've got to cut this to length here, weld the tab on that holds it uh, to, to the top piece, clean off my my studs. I wonder if they really do come off like they show in the uh, in the line boring demos online. Son of a gun. Wow, that works out good. All right. Now to go back to my part four of four. All I've got left on this is these holes and these holes. And now that I'm a professional at line boring, Gee, this should be really simple. All right. Well, thanks for watching.